Increasing the temperature causes the rate of a reaction to increase. This is because increasing the temperature causes molecules to move faster, and as molecules move faster, they collide more frequently. Collisions are necessary for a chemical reaction to take place. Most collisions between two molecules actually don't result in a chemical reaction. In order for a chemical reaction to occur, the molecules need to have what we call a good collision. There are two criteria for being a good collision. And again, a good collision is what's necessary or what will ultimately result in a, in a chemical reaction. So there are two criteria for a good collision. And the first criteria is the alignment of the molecules. The molecules as they are colliding must line up perfectly with each other. What we mean by a perfect alignment is something that is unique to the chemical reaction. So the way that the molecules line up is going to vary from one reaction to another. I'm going to give you one example of this. So this is a reaction that takes place between the hydroxide ion, which has a negative charge, and I'm going to put a circle around that, which is conventional. And um, this molecule, it's a carbon atom that has three hydrogens and a bromine. In order for this reaction to take place, the oxygen atom has to collide with the carbon atom, not one of the hydrogens and not one of the bromines. Also, it is the oxygen atom that has to collide, not the hydrogen, so it's a very specific two atoms that have to interact. Not only that, but the oxygen atom has to collide with the carbon atom from a position that is directly opposite from the bromine. So it has to literally come from this side of the molecule. It can't collide from this angle. It couldn't collide from over on the other side. It has to be exactly opposite of the bromine. So you can imagine it's pretty difficult for a collision to occur um, with this perfect alignment between the two, um, between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom. Not only do the molecules have to line up perfectly, but they have to collide with a lot of force. They need to have enough force in their collision to break whatever bonds need to be broken for the chemical reaction to take place, um, and also to make any bonds that might need to be made. In this same reaction example here, when the molecules come together, they have to initially collide with enough force to create this bond between the carbon and the oxygen atom. Now, they also have to collide with enough force to break the carbon-bromine bond because that's part of this reaction as well. Although the carbon-bromine bond doesn't break immediately in this particular reaction. So for a, for a very small amount of time, for a very small fraction of a second, the oxygen atom forms its bond to the carbon, the bromine is still attached. This, um, like I said, only exists for a small fraction of a second, and then very quickly, the bromine is released from the molecule, <clears throat> which gives us this product right here. And then the bromine, which is now a bromide ion. I'm not gonna draw its lone pairs because I don't have a lot of room. Um, this, this thing, it's not really a molecule, that exists in between the reactants and the products is referred to as a transition state. And it's what I'm going to be talking about in the next video. And in summary, the collision theory, which is what this is about, says that as you increase the temperature, this ultimately results in more collisions, which increases the likelihood that a collision will meet the criteria for being good and a reaction will take place.